This is the Horse Radio Network. This is episode 205 of Horse Tip Daily, a different horse tip, a different equine topic, a different equestrian expert every day. Horse Tip Daily brings the whole world of equine knowledge to you one day at a time. Today's tip is sponsored by Kentucky Performance Products. Visit them at kppusa.com. Enjoy today's tip. This is Glenn Geek back with you from Lexington, Kentucky, and welcome back to Horse Tip Daily. I want to apologize. This show, the first show of the week, is getting usually comes out on Wednesday and runs through Sunday. Is getting out a little bit late because uh, we had some technical difficulties yesterday with the website. Had to work on that and finally have that fixed. So this we're coming out a day late, but we're going to put two out uh, on tomorrow on Friday. So you'll have two tips tomorrow instead of one. And again, we apologize for that. Even geeks have technical difficulties sometimes. And I sometimes have to go to bigger geeks, the really geeky geeks. I call myself a geek just because I like gadgets and like to play with toys. But, uh, you know, I'm not really a coder, so I do all the website work on the websites and all the social networking and things like that, uh, and and do a lot of the editing of the shows. Did the first 400 episodes edited myself, and now we have a little help. Thank you to Brian. But uh, some of the geeky stuff goes way above my head. Well, today we have back with us one of our favorite new guests is Dr. Jenny Johnson. She runs the Oak Hill Shockwave and Veterinary Chiropractic Clinic in Calabasas, California. And, of course, you know that she does these tips as part of the Jumping Radio Show. This is taken off of Episode 11 over at JumpingRadio.com. It's hosted by Chris Stafford. And she started a series last week on lameness here on Horse Tip Daily. So we're continuing that series on lameness which is very interesting. She gets in depth, but she does it in a way that even I can understand it. So I do like having Dr. Johnson on the show. And speaking of lameness and keeping your horses healthy, well, that's what Kentucky Performance Products is all about. And I'd like to, for you to sit back, take a listen to a little bit about Kentucky Performance Products, and then more in the lameness series from Dr. Jenny Johnson and Chris Stafford. At Kentucky Performance Products, quality assurance is a key ingredient found in every product they sell. Each supplement is manufactured to exacting standards and certified facilities. Their ingredients are sourced from highly reputable suppliers, and their formulas are fixed to ensure consistency in each bucket. So what does the promise of quality assurance mean to you and your horse? It means you can trust that when you purchase a supplement for Kentucky Performance Products, you will see the results that you expect and the quality that you can count on. They guarantee it. Kentucky Performance Products, helping you keep your horses healthy, sound, and competitive. Visit them at kppusa.com. That's kppusa.com. Well, Dr. Johnson has started this series um, right back at the beginning of the Jumping Radio Show, and then we began a new segment here with the lamenesses and of course lamenesses are something in every jumping barn needs to to be familiar with you know that what to look for what not to look for i think this is a really useful introduction to uh being aware of uh of the many lamenesses that there are out there and the difference between soundness and lameness so uh, let's hear what dr johnson has to say this week Hi, Jenny. Nice to have you back this week. And I, you know, we, we started this great series on lameness and it was fascinating last week, you know, with the introduction to identifying which limb. Um, now you've got the next step in that, uh, in that process that you're going to talk about this week. Yes, today, Chris, I want to talk about confirmation and how it relates to lameness. It's uh, well accepted that the way a horse is conformed determines the way it moves. Confirmation determines the shape of the foot, the wear of the foot, the flight of the foot, and the distribution of weight. And I want our listeners to think about it as you know, the confirmation is one piece of the complex puzzle of a lame horse. And something I always like to keep in the back of my mind is that you know faulty confirmation is not an unsoundness, but it is a warning sign. And there are certain confirmational faults that produce predictable lameness conditions. And I think. Keeping that in mind goes a long way towards our assessment of horses, both in the purchase and then in the evaluation of a horse that's lame. Now, certain conformational faults appear to be highly heritable. For example, toe in, toe out, back at the knees, sickle hawk, straight behind. 
those horses, those faults tend to be to be heritable. It does appear that the dam contributes more to faulty conformation than the sire, but that might be because mares with faulty conformation frequently develop problems, are retired early, and then used as brood mares. Whereas the stallions usually are more proven performers and typically have outstanding conformation. So it may not be that there's a genetic uh, predisposition towards the faults of the dam, but more an overrepresentation in the population of faulty dam conformation, if you will. And the other thing that's interesting to note is that there are certain lamenesses that develop inexplicably in some breeding lines year after year in offspring that have acceptable conformation. So I think the point of this is that a well-educated um, buyer or owner is uh, important. It's important to sort of become aware of, of what conformation faults lie in certain lines of horses, as well as what soundness issues there may have been present in certain lines of horses with or without those conformational faults. Now, when we think about the evaluation of conformation, there's, there are four basic components that I want our listeners to think about. And uh, I will go over, we'll talk in depth about these in, uh, individually, but they, they are, first, balance. Secondly, we'll talk about the assessment of the lengths, angles, and heights of various parts of the horse. Uh, third, we're going to talk about the conformation of the limbs themselves. And then, lastly, we'll talk a little bit about muscling of the horse. All of these factors are intertwined, but they should be evaluated individually and then consolidated and, and the horse evaluated as a whole. So first, I'd like to talk about balance a little bit. Balance is the way that all the parts of the horse fit together. And I'm going to try and give a visual um, idea for our listeners to think about. Uh, I want them to visualize the horse in thirds from the body portion of the horse, exclusive of the neck. So think about the forehand, the mid-body, and the hindquarters. And then I would like you to imagine three circles, one over each part of the horse, the forehand, the mid-body, and the hindquarters. Those circles should overlap by about one-third. And when you have that proportion, then you have a well-proportioned horse. And deviations from this are going to lead to, to problems frequently. For example, a short-backed horse, may be predisposed to overlapping dorsal spinous processes, and you, you may end up with uh, kissing spine lesions. Now, a long-backed horse may be difficult to engage. The next thing is I want you to think about limb length. The limb length should be proportional to the body size. If you think about the body length from the point of the shoulder to the point of the rump, that should be about equal to... Um, or slightly longer than the height of the horse at the withers. That just sort of gives us an idea of the balance of the horse and the proportions that should fit together. So next I want to talk a little bit about uh, assessing the various lengths and angles and heights that are involved in the horse's conformation. Body length in general is important in determining stride length. A short coupled conformation predisposes predispose the horse to shorter strides and potentially problems with interference. If the horse is too long, can be weak in the back. The length of the neck is important in assessing the overall balance, and it should be proportionate to the overall body length. So those, those sorts of things all interact together. Now, shoulder length may be directly related to stride length. And when I talk about shoulder length, I'm talking about starting from a point at the top of the withers to the point of the shoulder. Longer shoulders typically equals a longer stride. The shoulder length and the shoulder angle are often also related. Long shoulders, typically you'll have a more uh, sloping shoulder. Now, classically, the ideal shoulder angle, and we're talking about the angle basically of the scapula relative to the ground, classically that should be 45 degrees. And concomitantly, the forelimb pastern angle should be equal to the shoulder angle. Now, horses that have a steep shoulder angle over 50 degrees, say in the 50 to 55 degrees, will usually have short shoulders. They'll usually have more short, upright pasterns, and that will uh, predispose them to lower limb lamenesses. Next, I want to talk about rump length. 
similar to shoulder length, rump length is also important in determining the stride length. A longer length of the rump is desirable, as is a long, flat croup. Many horses with the long rumps have longer rump angles or a flatter croup, and those with short rumps frequently have smaller rump angles or steeper croups. Uh, the steep rump angle shifts the center of gravity backwards and can predispose them to hind limb lameness. So those factors all play together in the biomechanics of the horse. Now, looking at the limbs, I want to point out that it's critical to evaluate the horse standing squarely on a firm, flat surface whenever you're looking at a horse for confirmation. Now, some horses are, are fairly well-schooled in how to stand up squarely, whereas others are a bit more difficult to get to stand up squarely. But uh, hopefully with a skilled handler, you can accomplish a reasonably square stance. And it's also equally important to make sure that you're on a flat surface and uh, not on a surface that will have anything obscuring the lower limbs. For example, you can't evaluate a horse effectively uh, when they're standing in grass that's growing over their cornet bands. The other thing I want to introduce our listeners to is the idea of the plumb line. And what I mean by that is imagining a line dropped from specific points to the ground and using that to evaluate the correctness of a limb. And that will allow you to evaluate limbs from the front, from the side, and from behind. For example, if you drop a vertical line, if you're standing in front of the horse, and you drop a vertical line from the point of the shoulder to the ground, that line should exactly bisect the limb, cut it in half. Deviations from this are going to lead to alterations in the stress on that limb. And with that, uh, specific um, strains that will cause specific injuries or potentially cause specific injuries because of that abnormal conformation. The other thing that's very important is to evaluate the horse while he's walking. Some defects are only apparent in the dynamic situation. Trimming and corrective shoeing can enable a horse to stand fairly correctly. And when you look at him, the horse looks fairly correct standing. But when you watch the horse move, that may illuminate some underlying faults that, that you couldn't otherwise see when the horse was standing still. So always important to watch a horse move. Lastly, I want to talk a little bit about muscling. Muscling, um, the muscling of the horse should be even and symmetrical, should be smooth. You should be, again, symmetrical when you look from side to side and consistent throughout the body, if you will. Alterations from this can give you a tip-off to either um, an abnormality of gait, a weakness somewhere, or an alteration in the horse's balance. So these may be subtle findings, but can really... Uh, be very important when you pick up on them may lead you to uh, an evaluation of other areas that you might not have seen otherwise that, that could be uh, a problem for the horse. So those are sort of the basic components of confirmation, and I want to leave it at that for this week. And then next week, we'll start to talk about more specific conformational defects in the forelimb and how they relate to specific lamenesses or how they alter the wear and strain forces on the horse and how they can lead to specific types of injuries and specific pathologies that the horses may develop. Wonderful. Very instructive as ever, Jenny. Thank you so much. I look forward to uh, the next episode um, and drilling, getting, sort of digging deeper into the lameness issues because there, it, it, there are so many, aren't there? This, it's so complex and, uh, and ver- so varied for in, in all, the, all the ways that a horse can go lame on you. It is, and I think it's important for our listeners to, to really gain an appreciation for the complexity of lameness and, and to understand how many different factors that there are that go into a horse going from, from sound to lame. And uh, hopefully that will enable them to have uh, better observational skills with their horses and, and have a better understanding and sense of where their horses um, fit in that continuum from soundness to lameness. 
Thank you to Chris and to Dr. Johnson for being here once again on Horse Tip Daily and for doing what they do over at the Jumping Radio Show. You can find that at jumpingradio.com. And I know Chris is switching things up a little bit over there at the Jumping Radio Show. They're going to get into more practical things like training and jumping, and they're going to try and really take that jumping and cross it across all the disciplines that do jumping, eventing and fox hunting and pretty much hunter, jumper, anything that jumps. So they're going to try and do more on training and more of the practical stuff over there on that show. So she's switching it up a little bit now, and we're excited to hear what what she's doing over there at JumpingRadio.com. Well, don't forget you can drop me an email, and I've been getting a bunch of them. As a matter of fact, it's time for today's email. I love doing the emails just because I love that jingle so much. Well, today's email comes from Victoria, and she says, I just want to say that I really enjoy your shows, especially the Horse Tip Daily Show. I listen as often as I can all the way from central London to pick up tips for me and my horse, Amadeo. Great name, by the way, Victoria. Amadeo. Keep up the good work. Victoria in London. Well, thank you, Victoria, for listening all the way over there in England. This little show right now has over 6,000 daily listeners in 30 countries. So we appreciate everybody who listens. I have a couple more emails to share with you this week from around the world. So we'll just do, we'll do the worldwide emails this week, and we'll have one for you every day. So stay tuned. And thanks, Victoria, from London. Well, don't forget, Helene and I have another great episode of Tack and Habit for you, the second episode of the Tack and Habit radio show, where we, we talk about new products every week. That's stuff, uh, you know, horse stuff. Stuff for your horse, stuff for you, stuff for the barn. We just, re- we just review two new stuff things every week and you can uh, take a listen we have a lot of fun with it it's just an entertaining show so stop on over to tackandhabit.com or you can find all the shows at horseradionetwork.com and that's about it for me today everybody we'll see you again tomorrow and as i said tomorrow we'll have two episodes to make up for missing yesterday because of our little technical difficulty with the website which really was a pain in the neck and did fight me for quite a while on that, but got some professional help in and we were able to get it fixed. So I'll be back again tomorrow with two new experts and two horse tips. Until then, stay safe, everyone.